Rainbow Warrior here, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet these cups, which would look great added to any top or dress, or can of course be worn on their own as a bra or a bikini. So I'm going to show you what you need, and let's get started. For your yarn, you're going to want to work with a cotton yarn because it is a natural fiber and very breathable to wear in the warm weather. And for my hook, I'm just using a size smaller than what is recommended for my yarn which is a G hook or size 4 millimeter. I'm going to begin with a slip knot and placing the slip knot on our hook we're going to start with a foundation chain. This foundation chain is going to be half of the width of your cup. So I'm chaining 12 however depending on your measurements and your preference you will probably be chaining a different amount than me. Remember, this amount is going to be half of your total width, so if you want, you can measure your body, or you can measure a bra or bikini that you already have, and find half of the width, and that's how long you want your foundation chain to be. So here's my 12 chains, and to begin row 1, we're going to chain 1, and single crochet in the second chain from the hook. To single crochet, we reach into our loop, and yarn over and now we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. There was my first single crochet stitch and I'm going to place a single crochet stitch in each space all the way down my foundation chain. At the end of this row our number of stitches should equal amount to the chains we started with in our foundation. So for example mine will have a total of 12 single crochet stitches. Here, after you've worked all the way down to the end of your foundation chain, we have our first row completed. After this row, we're going to continue single crocheting. So we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip over the first single crochet stitch since our chain one is going to count as our first stitch. And we're going to single crochet into our second stitch. And for row two, we're just going to simply place a single crochet in each stitch all the way down our row. When you come to the end of a row, don't forget to work your last single crochet into that chain one space. It can be a little tricky to see, but that chain one is our first stitch. We're going to continue single crocheting rows until we have a perfect square and the width equals the length. So chain one and turn and single crochet in each stitch until you have a square shape. The best way to check that these two measurements are equal is to fold your square on a diagonal like so and line up to make sure that all your sides are the same size. For my square I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows, and I'm going to begin my twelfth row. For this row, I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to place a single crochet in each stitch along the top here, and when I get to the last stitch or the corner stitch, I'm going to place two stitches and then crochet along the edge as well. So along the top, placing a single crochet in each stitch. When we reach that last stitch of the row, we're going to place two single crochets in the same stitch to help us turn around to that edge there. So there was our first stitch, and here is our second stitch. And now we're going to single crochet along this edge placing one stitch for every row that we have. So there I'm pointing out each row and where I'm going to place my single crochet stitch. The best way to check that you are having the right amount of stitches is to make sure you have the same number of stitches as you do rows. So after you crochet along this edge, I will have 12 single crochets along this side as well as my 12 single crochets along the top keeping our square shape.
Once that row is completed, we're going to continue working back and forth around in this shape along the side and then back down this edge. And we're going to be single crocheting in each stitch and placing two single crochets in those two stitches we created from the last row. So for my next row, I'm going to chain one and turn, placing a single crochet in each stitch back along this edge here. When you reach those two single crochets we place in our corner stitch, we're going to place another two in our first stitch and two in our second stitch as well. This increase not only helps us turn around our corner here, but it helps shape our cup. And now we're going to continue single crocheting along this edge. Now for the following rows, we're simply going to single crochet one in each stitch back and forth until you have your needed size for your cups. So for the following rows, we're chaining one and turning, placing a single crochet along this row here, as well as around our corner and then back down the side. The number of rows we're crocheting back and forth here should equal the amount of rows we crocheted in the beginning for our square. So for example, I said I had 11 rows for my original square and I'm going to crochet an additional 11 rows back and forth around this corner. So that way my measurements are nice and equal. Here is my completed cup and I really like the shaping of this. I feel like it provides a very good amount of coverage and it holds in the ladies very nicely. I mentioned if you want to check to make sure that your two distance are equal, that's how you know that your cup is complete. And now we're going to crochet along these two edges to clean up that border. I'm going to place another single crochet in my last stitch so that it can help me turn around this edge and I'm going to be placing one stitch for every row for this border. So every single crochet row will get one single crochet stitch. At a point you will reach your original foundation chain and we're just going to continue single crocheting, placing one stitch in each chain space. I'm placing three single crochets in my last space in the corner here. Here's one, two, and three. Now it's time to crochet along this edge. Again, placing one single crochet for each row we have. And as well, I'm going to be locking my tail into my work here just by laying it close to my stitches. After we've completed this finished edge, our first cup is complete and we're going to make our second cup using the exact same steps and the same process. It can be handy to write down how many rows you worked with so that way you're not guessing and making your cups the exact same size. Here you can see one of my completed cups and my second cup was completed in the exact same way and then I simply flip it over in the opposite direction so that they line up like so. 
There are many different ways that you can wear these cups. As I mentioned, you can add them to any top or dress that you may want to make, or you can just wear them on their own. You can, of course, crochet your straps, or what I like to do is use three strands of yarn and connect them at the corner and braid them together for another optional look. Here is my completed top, and I'm really satisfied with the look of these cups. I think they're really good for full coverage and more busty women. If you're looking for a more string bikini type cup, then you can click on my tutorial. I have one for those as well. And I do plan on making lots more patterns using both these style cups and the bikini cups. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on them. And if you're not watching these videos from a computer and you can't see the annotations, then all the links will be down below in the description. You can also find a link to the pattern and links to my social media sites in the description. Be sure to send me any pictures of your finished projects because I love to see. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this pattern and I hope to see you in my next tutorial. Thanks for watching.